I grew up in the frozen wasteland of Canada. <laughs> the cool thing about growing up in a small town is you kind of get away from the idea of this is cool, this is not cool, you're allowed to listen to this, you have to have this haircut. It just became all kind of like, you like what you like, and uh, you just kind of ignore what you don't really connect with. I was like 11 or 12, I would run around with my dad's, my dad had an arch top with the F-holes, and I would just put it on and pretend to be, I don't know, Elvis or something, and my dad was like, this is a C chord, this is a G chord, here's a D chord, quit messing with my guitar, <laughs> kind of thing. So then he uh, eventually, came home with a, an Epiphone uh, acoustic. And, uh, you know, me and my friends would sit around, we learned a million songs and would just play. And uh, eventually he said, well, you've got a guitar, we should get you a bass, which was interesting dad logic in his infinite wisdom. So we just went down to a store and picked a Gibson EB3 off the wall. It was a big deal to have the, the name Gibson written on the top of your headstock was a big deal for all my friends were the same thing. It's like, oh, he has a Gibson. In fact, I would, you know, oh, if you're looking for somebody, he's got a Gibson. You would immediately, you know, I could barely play, but I was, you know, immediately had this sort of like uh, professional ring to me just by owning the, the instrument. It's funny because in 91, when my band was doing the Sunset Strip um, hustle, you know, we, uh, we would hang out at the Rainbow all the time. And I met Slash back then. He has no recollection of this because he, because uh, yeah, it was 1991. <laughs> and he was uh, the, the, the mayor of the Sunset Strip back then. And then like fast forward to 2010, our drummer Brent Fitz got the gig and then called me and said, come down and jam. It was never kind of like auditions. It was just sort of more like, come down and jam, and I was like, okay. I just walked in, played Night Train, and it felt like we were immediately talking about, um, next week we're doing Jay Leno, and we're doing this and that. I was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> uh, for me, I always feel like the bass player is a very unique position to be in because you are playing with the guitars, obviously, and you're really playing with the drums. And I mean, that in reality, everybody's sort of playing together, but your job is so much more like in the rhythm uh, foundation of it all so the guitar player can do his thing on top um, so we really focus on you know I've never considered myself a uh, Bootsy or any of the level of those kind of guys who can do crazy stuff for me it was always about trying to find that real nice wall of sound we can create even just the two of us playing together looking for something that looks like a straight up rock and roll machine. This to me strikes me as, I guess you could play whatever you want on it, but I would def I definitely feel like playing this as loudly as possible. <laughs> the mahogany body, maple neck, it's actually really well balanced and really pretty evenly weighted. I, I feel like it's, it's really, really a solid, solid guitar. I, I always really dig the hotly wound buckers like that. It's a bass bucker. I love these kind of bridges. Three point adjustable bridge. Like this is just like no nonsense. Boom, there it is. You've also got your single coil tap. In such a, you know, what seems fairly limited as far as one pickup, you got your, your tone and your volume. You can kind of completely alter the tone just by pulling it up. So this is interesting. The mini clovers are really interesting because the, uh, they, they used to come, or the, the, my EB3 had the massive clovers that would do some serious damage. Yeah, like I said, if anybody came in my, in my orbit, they would often get knocked in the face with a giant clover. So this might do a little less damage. I still recommend they wear helmets when they play with me. Um, and then you get the best thing of all is you, you have the Les Paul model. Les Paul's name is right here on a bass guitar. So that's super rare. Basically all comes down for me is, is aggression, the growl. Um, and these basses definitely have all of that. The, uh, the Gibson basses in general to me have that kind of deep, heavy growl that I always look for. A friend of mine
Brian once said about guitars, he said, there's a song in every guitar, and it's why I've never met a guitar I didn't like, because every guitar you pick up, you start playing it, you start finding a new thing, and you'll find a riff, and you'll find a song in that guitar. That's kind of the beauty of, 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 of being a creative individual anyway, is just, you know, you pick up a guitar one day and noodle around, and there's a song in there, you know? And sometimes that song, no one will ever hear it, but sometimes that song is something that, you know, becomes somebody's favorite song or change your life in, in ways you can't imagine. See? <laughs> Just wants to rock.